Uh, so at this point, we are fortunate to have a professor from Northwestern, Jim Lisinski, who's going to cover capturing the power of AI with the AI marketing canvas. So Jim, you have your 15 minutes. Well, thank Great. you. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Jim Lisinski from the Kellogg School of Management here at Northwestern University. And my short talk today is going to be about how to use and apply the power of AI into marketing, into the, your marketing toolkit based on the research and frameworks in my book, The AI Marketing Canvas. So uh, let's jump in. Certainly, uh, there's been lots of news and buzz across all elements of the firm, front office, back office, uh, senior execs down to uh, new hires, all trying to figure out since January especially, uh, what do I make of this thing called AI, machine learning, generative AI, Bing, Bard, open AI, and so on. Everybody's been experimenting with it. And uh, marketers have been no exception to that. In fact, marketers have uh, jumped in with two feet, you might say. We've seen uh, examples of brands like Coca-Cola here on the left, as well as Levi's on the right, uh, trying to figure out how do you make use of these tools uh, to be more productive, uh, to delight your customers, uh, to sell more products, to be more profitable, et cetera. In fact, the CEO of Coke, James Quincy, has uh, called out in an earnings call that uh, Coke sees opportunities to enhance marketing with some of these tools. And they're also looking at ways to use AI in order to improve uh, back office business operations. That's Katya Walsh on the right. She was formerly the uh, chief strategy and chief AI officer. Think about that for a minute. Uh, chief AI officer at Levi's. Uh, where they have been applying this now for several years. And uh, as you can see underlined there on the right, their conclusion is that the use of AI has given Levi's a new ability to more precisely target their customers, which in turn has helped them boost revenue. So just a few examples uh, to get, get us started in our short conversation today, uh, thinking about um, uh, who has been using this and how have they been using it. But our overall hypothesis and, and the outcome of the research for the book was that um, marketing has a significant opportunity. Marketers have a significant opportunity to apply these AI tools, and we'll talk about some of them, to do what we're tasked with as marketers, and that is to build brands, drive profitable incremental growth, and gain a durable competitive advantage along the way. So let's think about how um, that is the case. Well, we have to start by thinking about what actually machine learning is. Machine learning, of course, a subset of artificial intelligence. Machine learning as a computer science technique can be especially good at classifying uh, data groups, could be images, could be groups of text, could be data points, could be sounds even, but classifying those and then making predictions about future instances. So, you know, I've shared with you here, I'm sure you've seen this, the kind of now very famous, uh, is it a chihuahua face or is it a blueberry muffin that uh, that we've all seen? And, you know, as a human, you look at this and it takes you a minute to find your, your sea legs, so to speak, but, um, you know, pretty quickly you can figure out which is which. And if you stop to think about how you know this, it's not because you're writing a program with if then statements. You're not hard coding something in your mind as a human saying, if the ratio of two top dots to the bottom dot is greater than 1.35 X to one, therefore it must be a chihuahua. No, you're doing this just because you've had lots of what computer scientists call training data, You've seen hundreds or thousands of chihuahuas and dogs in your life. You've uh, eaten maybe hundreds or thousands of uh, blueberry muffins so that you're able to use those historical examples in order to then, when I show you something on the right that you've never seen before, you look at that and you're able to now classify that muffin or chihuahua, uh, make some predictions with high accuracy. Now, you know, that's all fun and interesting with muffins and chihuahuas, but us as marketers, we're, if you think about it, doing this kind of thing all day long, we can look at our customers, we can look at our customer profile, and we can start to see um, patterns, right? Are these good customers? Are they not good customers? Are they likely to repeat? Are they likely to attrit? Are they likely to switch? Are they likely to require lots of uh, high touch, expensive customer service and so on? And so we can, we can use machine learning to help classify those customers. And then we can also use it to make a prediction when we uh, interact with someone who we have not yet seen before. We'll call that person a prospect, right? When she might come to our website for the first time, call our call center for the first time, 
time, interact with a salesperson for the first time. Is that prospect then likely to be based on machine learning pattern recognition and prediction, is that prospect likely to be a, a good customer or not a good customer, or someone who's likely to buy or not likely to buy and so on. So you can start to see that these computer science techniques have direct and relevant application to marketing. In addition to classifying and predicting, machine learning, as you know, can also generate new data, new content, here, we're specifically talking about generative AI, uh, tools like ChatGPT from OpenAI or, or BARD from Google, uh, where these tools take as their training data uh, a set of text. We might call that a prompt. And we've got some excellent speakers uh, following me who are going to talk much more about this. But based on that prompt, it tokenizes the prompt into uh, uh, a series of word fragments translated to numbers and then predicts or produces uh, the result of that. So if I said one, three, five, seven, the machine would probably come back and say nine. If I said Mary had a little, the machine would come back and say lamb. If I started saying, write a tweet for me, I am the Pop-Tarts brand manager and we want to announce a new product, it can come back and do something like that as well. So you can see from you know, how these tools work from a computer science standpoint that they're particularly well suited to what we do as marketers. Because if you think about it, this is what we do for a living, right? Marketing, brand building, uh, advertising and sales is all about classifying, predicting, and then generating. So what we're trying to do is to predict what is the right product, the right offer, the right time, the right channel or medium, the right tone, the right creative to the right prospect uh, in order to get them to take the next step in the path to purchase in the customer journey. Um, now, when I say this, that's often a, a little bit of a, a head scratcher for marketers because we don't usually consider ourselves in the business of classifying, predicting, and generating. That's sort of a computer science lens as to what we do, but but truly that is what we do. And uh, you know, we've always done it with um, a combination of experience, intuition history in the field, history in the trade, uh, assisted by some data, could be data from focus groups, it could be data from a spreadsheet. Um, you know, again, now we use a new term called training data in, from the computer science field, but this is kind of what we do for a living. So, you know, it seems well suited that we as marketers can take advantage of uh, machine learning and generative AI. So where do you start is often a question that I'm asked and one that we spend a lot of time trying to think about in the book. Um, you know, sometimes people say, hey, you could build a chatbot. Should we start with a chatbot? Or, you know, hey, should we build a custom algorithm? Or, you know, hey, should we hire some computer scientists? No, actually, the best place to start, the best practice is to start with a business problem or opportunity rooted in classification, prediction, or creation. Specifically, I encourage you as marketers to ask yourself the question, what is it in your marketing function, in your day-to-day -day operations, that if you were able to suggest significantly better classify, predict, or create, that is with much more fidelity and or less resources, doing so would thereby unlock significant incremental business value. That's the place to start. And you notice I talk about greater outcome or lesser resource input. We often think about applications of these tools in marketing uh, from either an efficiency and or an effectiveness standpoint. And so let me just unpack that for a minute. On the efficiency side, there are things that we do as marketers. We say, could we just do more for less? You get to the same end result, but could you do it in a more efficient way, uh, ginning up some savings for the team? Things like reports that you generate, instead of having you know, lots of human hours and, and high touch to create your weekly sales reports, is there a way that you can get to that same sales report in a much more efficient way, human plus machine? Alternatively, on the effectiveness side of things, now we think about what your customers actually see, the ads, the messages, the emails, the calls, um, their experience when they call your customer service or file a ticket with you. Um, how can we make those things much more 
relevant, personalized, and delightful for our customers, such that their net promoter scores, their customer satisfaction scores, and ideally their transactions and profitability go up with us. So start with the problem first, not trying to apply you know, the so-called tool or shiny object to a problem. So let me show you a, a few use cases or examples of where we can apply artificial intelligence in marketing. And I've just on the left here picked um, nine of the most common things that we do as marketers. You sort of start out with a, a market segmentation and a customer segmentation, and then you try to figure out who are your prime prospects for targeting. Um, you uncover some insights uh, among that target group. You develop your products. You put together some advertising, marketing communications message. You put those out uh, through a media buy in places that your customers will see, Facebook, Google, Instagram, TikTok, wherever. Um, then customers interact with you if they've got some customer service uh, kinds of challenges or, or concerns. And then you measure and optimize along the way. So just a quick run through how uh, AI uh, can help in all of those areas. In the world of segmentation and targeting, um, you know, we're all used to, you know, kind of looking at, I'll call it small data, MRI data, customer data, focus group data, et cetera, and trying to select who's our prime prospect. Alternatively, um, we can feed millions of rows of customer information into these models and use some techniques like uh, K-means with a factor reduction analysis or Gaussian techniques and have the machine actually identify for us uh, what are the two, three, or four customer segments that actually um, cluster uh, most naturally our customers. And then from there, if we want to try and figure out some kind of trends, we can use some tools that are out there. Here's one I like very much called Trend God, where you can go in and you see here, I said, uh, tell me about the future of laundry detergent. This is uh, just one of many purpose-built tools that has ingested lots of research reports and now can come back and tell us what the trends are. Um, you can do the same looking at trends in flavor profiles. IBM and McCormick are doing this to create the next big flavor. What comes after sriracha and wasabi in product development? Um, in chatbots for customer service, you can see that Kia, both for chatbot on their site, but also as an ad unit, is now letting you kind of interact with what kind of vehicle are you looking for? Is it for your family? Is it for work, et cetera, and identifying uh, specifics there. So that's a pretty cool application of AI. Um, when it comes to personalized advertising and site content and optimization, uh, Google just announced a new product called Product Studio, which lets you take your product hero shot and then create thousands of different versions of that, backgrounds, headlines, text, et cetera, to show in your um, Google 360 uh, display ads. And then for measurement, companies like P&G have built some solutions in-house, but uh, uh, external companies like Flowsom and OfferFit out of Boston are now using the predictive power such that you can upload your video if before you post it live on TikTok and get back a prediction of how well that ad unit will perform and you can optimize it even before it goes live. So what we're talking about here is something of a marketer's exosuit, right? It's human plus machine, you, Dr. Tony Stark, plus your Iron Man suit uh, to get to a better outcome. And what we're talking about here then is that, that um, uh, increased vector uh, modern marketing, as we'll call it, the gap between that and human plus small data, human plus keyboard is where we believe from our research, you can really gain that competitive advantage. Um, and we're seeing that. Here's some empirical results. This was from a McKinsey study released earlier this year. And you can see uh, sales and marketing I've highlighted in the middle, but across all activities firm wide, you see firms that are adopting AI are on average getting about a 6% effectiveness gain and about a 9% uh, efficiency gain. And those who have the biggest gains from that same McKinsey study are those that have a clear roadmap, a plan for how to implement this. And so uh, for our research for the book, we spent a lot of time thinking about um, what is the plan or the roadmap? How do marketers go from zero to superhero, if you will, implementing AI? And that's the the really the heart of the book. And I'll I'll just share what we uh, came up with in our research here to wind up my time with you today. And that is the so-called AI marketing canvas that we developed. It's five stages. You start at the bottom and say, before you can apply AI to your marketing toolkit, you need training data. You need zero party, first party data, perhaps also second and third party data with permission. But that's the training data that you can use to train the models in order to then make these predictions and generate the content that we talked about earlier. At the second stage, though, you don't go build your own models or hire your own uh, computer scientists. 
posts. In fact, what you do is work with all of your partners, uh, Salesforce, Instagram, Google, Facebook, uh, everyone has these kinds of tools that you're already working with as marketing partners, take advantage of them. And then at stage three, start to expand by building an in-house capability, name an AI marketing champion, a second hat, 20% role, uh, someone whose job it is to help build this capability in-house. And then, you know, once you've done enough of these experiments, you can start to transform from the old way human plus keyboard spreadsheets to the new way, human plus AI. And just a few companies may get to the very top of the rung where actually the system that you've built to optimize AI for yourself, you might be able to sell or license to another company as an additional incremental revenue stream. Washington Post does this, for instance. And so with that, I'll wind up my time together. Thank you for being with us all today. Uh, there's the QR code to the book and uh, please connect with me on LinkedIn. Thank you. And Gerald, back over to you. Thank you, Jim. That was an outstanding 15 minutes.